repressing dissent and using the media to promulgate anti-Western sentiment. Russia, other countries and media-savvy actors have mastered the art of propaganda. Can Europe strike back and how can they counter? Elmar Brock, the chair of Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee, sat down with Europol TV. Okay, Mr Brock, thank you for joining us. Now, a poll says that 75% of Russians believe that there are no Russian soldiers in Ukraine. It gives Putin an 85% approval rating and it also says that 20% of Russians would like to wear a t-shirt with Vladimir Putin's face in it. So what do you make of this? Is Putin the best modern day propaganda merchant that is out there right now? Look, he was able to destroy uh, nearly all independent media. So he has the mon monopoly of uh, the media and therefore he's telling his people what he likes. We are not able to do the same thing. Uh, there's a difference uh, between a democracy uh, where we have uh, the freedom of media with different opinions and uh, therefore uh, such uh, uh, autocratic leader is always uh, more able to manipulate his own people. But how does Russian propaganda work and how is EU anti-Russian propaganda not working? No, I think it's a difference uh, that I try to explain uh, between an autocratic society we can produce one opinion and the European Union where we have in every country uh, ten opinions. Uh, and uh, therefore in a free society it's very difficult to come up with one opinion, one information policy. But this task force that has been set up, it's a very small task force. Russia itself has troll farms made up of hundreds of people. Is the EU expected, or does the EU want to have troll farms of its own? We have to counteract it, both within the European Union and in Russia, and in the neighboring countries of Russia. And here I think so many modern possibilities are available. We have only to take a little bit more money in our hands uh, do it jointly as nations of the European Union. Just to give you a few facts and figures on Russia today, it broadcasts not only in different languages, and according to them, they are the first broadcast channel to reach a billion views or hits on YouTube. So what would you like to see Europe do? Would you, would you like to see a Europe today, perhaps? A Europe today and perhaps a better cooperation between uh, BBC, Deutsche Welle, and uh, the French channels. And uh, I think here we have to put much more money into that. I saw the other day in uh, Iraq, uh, the way it was done in, in Arabic. Uh, there was no BBC and no Deutsche Welle there, but Russia today in a hotel. And then you see how fine it spread everywhere. And uh, we are, do not competing very much with that. And would part of the strategy involve maybe breaking down the myth or the godlike status that Putin seems to have acquired? No, I think it's not a question directly with Putin. It's a question of not anti-Russian movement, but bring, make facts correct. So who do you think is pulling the strings? Would you say it's the Kremlin or, or would you put a name on it and call it Putin? I think all this policy is the Kremlin and Putin. Now moving away from Russia itself, there's Ukraine, there's Georgia, and then of course the so-called Islamic State, who have been able to use propaganda to their advantage. First of all, we have no EU media policy and we cannot have a unified EU media policy because it's against our principles of a free society. Uh, but on top of that, we must be able to create something which takes that into account, but on the other side, gives clear information of our, our policy, uh, have clear information on the, about that, what happens in the world, and uh, do it in an entertaining way. But it's very difficult, it's very expensive, but our uh, leaders in Brussels and in the national capitals have to understand that in de these days propaganda war is at least so effective as normal war in order to influence uh, um, the world. Thank you so much, Thank you. Mr. Brock. Thank you. Thank you so much.